guys, it's Michelle. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we will be reviewing a sampling of Louis Vuitton's men's perfume. So stay tuned. If you are new here, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. And if you are returning, thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe. Okay, so you guys already know I'm a firmware client advisor, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, since I have been uh, working at Louis Vuitton, they have come out with so many more men's perfumes. And I popped into the men's store at the Wynn Las Vegas and uh, shout out to George. He gave me not just one sample, but a whole bag of samples. But I was like so thrilled because um, he, had, he had said, I, I have a question. Do you have a YouTube channel? And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, that somebody recognized me. So thank you. It's totally, totally made my day that uh, people out there in the streets are watching my channel. So I'm going to group them by category. Let's start with the California collection. We have Sun Song, Cactus Garden. In this collection too is Afternoon Swim, which I don't have the sample of, but I know what it smells like. And then there's California Dream, which is new to me. The California collection is marketed as unisex for either men or women. That afternoon swim is particularly popular for men, especially this time of the year, gift giving and stuff. Okay, and then um, there are some from the, I would say the original, the original line. Let me read you the names. Sur la route, uh, contre moi, a hasard, and a nouveau monde. So um, the names of the, uh, not, when I say original, it's like they had this launch and there was maybe five men's perfumes, but it's all about, the names are all about the essence of travel. So the perfume is, uh, if you really study it online, they have the story about the essence of travel and the notes that are in each one and what each one means. Each fragrance is packaged like this. Mine is a little dirty because I just take this whole cylinder and drop it in my suitcase when I'm traveling. But here is what it would look like. Uh, this one is in an amber container because it has oud. It's part of the special collection that has oud. But the samples that I have here are from a different collection and those bottles are clear. The fragrance inside has a little color to them. So imagination is kind of a light aqua color. The key notes here are amber and tea. Unprecedented attraction of amber and tea for imagination to take flight. In case you didn't know, the way to apply cologne is spray it once in the air and then walk through it. Just once. Do not spray it all over. I really don't like when I'm in the elevator with someone and I feel like I can't breathe and um, or if I get into the elevator and it smells like somebody sprayed half a bottle of uh, fragrance in there but they probably left 20 minutes ago. Yeah, so spray once and walk into it because it's supposed to react with your body, not your clothes. So you're gonna spray it on your body. This is so lovely. It's very fresh. I actually would wear this. To me, it smells a little unisex. The images of imagination are like on the beach, clouds. That is exactly how this feels. Yeah, I definitely like that one. Okay, so that is the one I walked in for. And then the also, the another one that I had sprayed last year that I liked is Meteor. Now what the advisor did tell me was that Meteor is a nice scent, but it doesn't last as long as imagination for whatever reason. Spray it on your skin and walk around and see how the scent changes because yes, scents do change. They change with your skin chemistry. So Meteor, oh, I did talk about this before, the spicy mandarin. It's, uh, it has that light freshness to it, but the spiciness also gives it a very masculine, earthy tone. Oh. Look at the colors just on the sample vial. It's like the sunset. Oh, that's so pretty. Mandarin as passionate as a sunset. All right, so we have another mandarin scent. Mandarin is a little orange in case you didn't know. So this captures the resonance of the sunset. Spray, ooh, ooh. This is like sipping a blood orange martini overlooking the sunset of the Mediterranean. Yeah, that's what that's what California Dream is like. Oh, it's California. Never mind. It's um, an, a blood orange martini over the sunset and uh, pick a beach. 
Malibu. <laughs> it has this intoxicating scent and that's why I think of like, you're, you're sipping a martini and you're getting a little intoxicated. Cactus Garden is one of my favorites. Actually, I already have a vial in my travel bag. So that's what it sounds like, Cactus Garden. This is like walking in a cactus garden in the springtime in Palm Desert. It has little hints to floral, it's very fresh. The cool freshness of an exotic patio. What's in here, bergamot and lemongrass. So this one, you might be walking through your patio in Palm Springs and the drink in your hand might be like a lemon spritzer or something. Next is Sunsong. I was not truly a fan of Sunsong because to me, it smells like soap. I'm sorry for anyone who loves this. Uh, let's see, orange blossom, lemon, and musk. Oh, that's what these notes were, lemon and musk. Okay, now let's go to the classics, the sur la route. Sur la route means along the route. So these classics, they were named, uh, if you kind of look into the descriptions on the website, they all embody the essence of travel. So sur la route means along the route, so it has like some lime to it, um, a dash of cedrat. I don't know what cedrat is, but they've got this kumquat lime looking fruit with cedrat and bergamot. A fragrance that resonates like the most vivid heartbeat. Okay, one thing I have to say about the Vuitton men's fragrances, I do think they're very sexy. They're masculine, they're intoxicating, and um, they're different from kind of your typical like Terry Mugler and Your Sauvage, uh, very typical men's fragrances. You know, I, once everyone has something, I just don't like it anymore. That's just me. Okay, Contre-moi. I remember this one is the one that smells vanilla-y. Yeah, and that was, you know what this reminds me of? When I was a little girl, I collected strawberry shortcake dolls. And do you remember how those smelled like Strawberry shortcake smelled like, or they tried to make her smell like strawberry, and then I had blueberry muffin and apricot. Um, this one smells like apricot. It reminds me of that, where the dolls would have a little scent to them. Okay, and you know, it's probably a little more sophisticated than a kid's toy. But this one is very vanilla-y. I, I had read something a long time ago that men really like the scent of vanilla because it's like reminds them of like someone like their mom or their grandma baking cookies for them so there's this underlying scent of vanilla that men are really attracted to just fyi but anyways with that said off on a tangent when i worked at louis most men the scent that they liked and picked to purchase for their women was a chop reps Catra Mall was actually not that popular, but it does smell vanilla. I don't know how it got like, but in a good vanilla, not in a boring vanilla. A good, expensive, exquisite, like Madagascar vanilla. Okay, Nouveau Mont. I remember not liking this one. <laughs> so, of course, of course you spray it closest to your computer. Now my computer will smell like it. Oh, okay, I just, Actually, I took a deep breath of this. It's not as bad as I thought. Now, when I was working there, you would smell all of these fragrances at once, and sometimes it was just like overkill. Like what I said about when you enter the elevator and it's like somebody emptied a whole perfume bottle in here. Ah, oh, yeah, you know, it's not as bad as I thought. Okay, now that I see the picture, uh, it's like, um, what is this? <laughs> Cocoa bean and oud. Oh, so it's the oud. A, re a re reconciliation of shadow and light. So in the picture, it's like it's like a brush fire. So now that that's connected in my mind, this is what this smells like. A brush fire. Something is on fire. Okay, I remember why I didn't like this set. Because <laughs> after a while, that is what it smells like. Like, someone's on fire! <laughs> but you saw my re initial reaction though, of like, yeah, this is, this is a good manly, Manly Matt said, okay. But I know, I remember Nouveau Mon. Either you love it or hate it. Cause some guys would be like, ugh. It's a very strong oud, which is very woody. If you didn't like, if you're like, bleh, no to Nouveau Mon, the scent that you most likely would gravitate to is Limon Cité, which is the, um, I would say refreshing, most commercial. Like when I say commercial, I mean like the Chanel's, the Sauvages, uh, those type of scents that I guess are more, more common to smell. Okay, last one is Ahasar. Now, I'm getting a headache because I am inhaling way too much here. So, let me just take a commercial break 
and talk about one of my sponsors, Rose Forever New York. You know, I love pink. I have actually, they have given me that arrangement there that is almost, I wanna say it's nine months old now and it's still fresh and beautiful and smells great. Of course, I picked another pink one um, for my new bookshelf here. And I like this because it has a little drawer. So check this out, all these little perfumes I can now put in the drawer or with my jewelry and my watch. So it gives me a little storage. And this does lift up too, so you can smell, oh, uh, smell your pretty roses. They last up to a year. They are preserved. They are real roses. Beautiful gift. And if no one is gifting you roses, ladies, gift them to yourself. There is a coupon code. It's dial M20 for $20 off your purchase. And also, ladies and gents, this brand is so much more reasonable than that Venus de Fleur brand that you see, like when the influencers' pages and the high-end malls, those arrangements are super expensive. I've seen them at like $400. So Rose Forever is much more reasonable. You'll spend a fraction of that price. Olfactory bulbs are in overdrive. I just have to get through the last one, a hazard. Um, my, my eyes are spinning, okay. Cardamom, uh, wood, and um, yeah, I'm not sure what else. Just not, not really my favorite either, but I, as you can see, I'm kind of on overdrive. So anyways, the tip, if you are in the store smelling perfume so you don't get to this confusion, is um, don't smell them all at once. Maybe you like pick your top two, and then you're supposed to smell coffee beans in between because that clears your olfactory bulbs because they'll start to like smell the same. But take like the top two, spray on one arm and then spray on the other and walk around with it and see which one that you're like, oh, this is great. And another tip for you is I love to layer perfumes. I know this is a little like on the expensive side for, per for perfumes. Actually, I think it falls right in the middle because some most like Commercial perfumes are about $100. And then there's brands like Creed that are like $400 or $500. Um, and Le Labo, and they're super like organic and expensive. So this I think falls in the middle at $265. Anyhow, if you're to this part of the video, guys, let me know in the comments what your favorite perfume is, and I will see you again soon. Bye.